Live from New York, it's the show that is making Caleb Williams' bear claw a little bit more interesting. How? Add, hey Dusty, what do you think about this, Marvel stuff? Or is it DC? Uh -huh. Add a little Wolverine to it, like whoo. I want to see it. I like that. That's a good idea. Like more like that, and then like this. Because if it's just sitting there, it's like what? Yeah. It's like a high five that you can't. You anyway. really expanded this beginning of the show. I probably should. Yeah. I'm sorry. You really? Yeah. You I'm gonna step it up now. Doing a <laughs> Two headlines to choose from from First Things First and Daily. We put this out daily. Wow. On the left or right? I'm not quite sure how this works. <laughs> What do you mean? I can't you tell if I'm looking at a mirror. No, that's, it's just you're looking at a TV screen. Maxi Magic's on the left, Nick's choking on the right. Maxi Magic is cool. How is that Nick's confusing choke? to you? Never know. If it was a mirror, the letters wouldn't even work for the viewer. But I thought it was like an ambulance when you look at it. <laughs> okay, he's already accounted for it. Okay. Y'all should have uh, let me do the headline. <laughs> I mean, uh, Nick's choke. Uh, uh, real creative. All right, what? can we get to the top? <laughs> Jeez. We... What's the better headline for you? Well, the the bigger headline, the story of the game, is what we're asking. And the answer is Tyrese Maxey. The headline is a 23-year-old budding star, potential one day, I don't know, maybe he bangs his way into club superstar. Mm. That guy having his first moment. And it is a moment that if the Sixers win the series – goes down as an all-time first-round moment. Yeah. The seven points in 15 seconds under those circumstances, neither three easy, both threes guarded, one from the logo in a do-or-die game where you had just seen, I this was the going from total maximum jubilation in that arena to John Stewart looking like how I assume he looked, you know what I mean, on a November evening in 2016. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Unbe like, I thought, Brew, that when they showed the crowd right after the Knicks went up six and the Philly called timeout, and you see LJ and Spree and Ewing and the celebrities and yeah. John Starks, yeah. it, all of it, I, I honestly it. felt like I think this is either the best or the second best Knicks moment in a quarter century. Mm. The, there was a m moment in the playoffs with Melo where he had an explosion and did the three to the dome, felt like ten times and they won a series. That's the only thing they in – blew that season, you know, yeah, the th second round. That's the only thing in play for what that wow. felt like. But then they lost yeah. right. because Tyrese Maxey took it from them and – if I may, and I know we'll get to him later, Embiid, after having a really rough second half again, I thought was excellent in the overtime. And so, uh, to me, the bigger story is what the Sixers did, not what the Knicks didn't do. Maxie was phenomenal, and I agree with everything you said. This is a moment, and if they should win this series, you're right. I mean, it's going to be like the Reggie Miller Obviously, that was later in the playoffs, but that's what it's like, and that's what everybody's thinking about when they see Maxi do that. However, the Knicks choked. That's kind of where I am. Period. The old, Nick, you know this. The only way, if you're up six, and I get it, it's a little different NBA. I've been saying that yeah. myself a long time. But the only way you lose a game when you're up six with 28.9 seconds left is if you choke. Mm. That's the only way because they could hit a three and you could hold the ball for the next 22 seconds, maybe get fouled, or if you miss, now they got to come down and do something heroic. And if you don't choke, all they can do is tie, you know. And so I, the Knicks blew it, and it's odd because everything they have displayed this season and this series, they just failed to do in those final 30 seconds, all right? They had been the team that was clutch. What were they down? Five with 47 seconds left in game yeah. two. They looked good. They had been the team that was mentally tough. They had been the team that plays smart. They had been the team that was better coached. Mm -hmm. And yet all of that went out the window in these last few seconds. Here's how it went. Uh, now, this was interesting because Mitchell Robinson – when he fouls Maxie. That was, to me, the only major mistake. It was a major mistake, but can we see it again? Yeah. I got to be honest. Did he definitely foul him? Yes. I, I don't know. 
There's another angle I we mean, were showing. Like, watch this feet. angle. He left his feet. And he goes Maxi kind of goes into him, though. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know how much contact there was. But to his credit, Robin, there hasn't been controversy yeah. over it. I'm kind of one of the few raises. Like Robinson said. owned it, so yeah. I'm going to go with that. But that's yeah. a mistake. That To me, that's the only no, major not, well, mistake. Okay, this isn't a mistake. It's just... You miss Josh Hart missing the one of two free throws. He's a 79% foul shooter this season. It, Gotta make that. Yep. And then not fouling Maxi on this. See. And and don't foul him as he's close to shoot. You had a lot of time to foul him. Now I know it wouldn't have chewed up as much clock. Right. But right. still. I think you got to foul him before he gets that off. Not many guys are going to always hit a logo three, but still, they did that. So, and then, hold on, and then in overtime, Jalen Brunson, two turnovers, he lets Joel Embiid pick him, and then he he goes up and just throws it away because he gets caught in the air. So, the Knicks blew this, and this was their opportunity, Nick. For the first time to clinch a playoff series at Madison Square Garden Wait. since 1999, I was the, there, the, and I was hoping they'd go ahead and do so, it again, but they didn't. All right, so I so let me push back a bit on – I think, listen, I think it was a foul by Mitchell Robinson, mm-hmm. and I think that was a, obviously a major mistake. I mean, people don't know this about me. I guess I'll just say it. I, as a little kid, I was a Knicks fan. I always knew there was something funny about Michael Jordan, so I never rooted for him. <laughs> and I, my mom was from New York, a group of Knicks fan. I have, to this day in my house, a framed Getty image of the last major four-point play in that building. The Larry Johnson I don't know that he got play. fouled either. Uh, and LJ. The, what? You have a framed picture I have of the a framed four picture point of the four-point play and a framed picture of the Allen yourself. Houston runner. Wow. Uh, because I had those for, from the time I was a little kid. It's uh, To be fair, it's not still hanging on the wall, but I had it in my <laughs> own, <laughs> literally. Uh, and the, so the, the, the thing on the Robinson thing, that was a mistake. I'm going to give the Sixers credit in this regard on the heart missed free throw. They were smart in who they fouled, guys. Jalen, it's the in, it's ball was not in bounds. Well, shoot. he's well, let's be fair though. He's seventy-five for his career, and he's sixty-six these playoffs. And it's hell of a lot better than letting Jalen Brunson shoot him. Yeah. Brunson got the ball. They trapped him. They forced it to a guy who, yes, seventy-nine percent, but also in less than two attempts per game. Like you'd rather him shoot him than the other. Right. And that I am a big proponent of fouling up three under most circumstances. When they inbounded the ball, there's 15 seconds left. And that is, to me, too much time. Well, one, to you should have denied the, him and made it harder it, for him to even get the, the pass. But it, I know you weren't going to be able to deny him fast. totally. It, he's but so made fast, it tougher. and he pulled up from 35 feet. And so, like, I just – and You it, know they said they were supposed to foul him. I, I, and that's where Tibbs failed in that he didn't make it clear to his team. I, I think that's fair. But to the other reason that I don't think it's a choke is they came out in overtime. And they're tied with a minute and a half left after the uh, Embiid flagrant. It's not like they folded. Like, oh, my God. I just think sometimes – you're right, Brew. They made mistakes. I agree with that. But it wasn't like a comedy of errors. There wasn't a five-second violation. It wasn't like game two with Philly, even though he got fouled. I just think Maxi. listen, man. As they say, the other guys get paid too. This guy is trying to turn into a star and had – an unbelievable yeah. run of moments to save a season. Yeah, Facing a little, can I give one other thing? Yeah. This has been the closest first round series since Rockets Blazers 2014. It was James Harden and Dwight Howard together, but that was the series that a young, around the same size, Damian Lillard walked it off with a buzzer beater against Houston in game six. And that was Dame's first real moment and ascension. And I do wonder if Tyrese is having a similar type of moment right nice. now. Nice. Uh, all right, let's go to talk about Embiid. What do you make of Embiid's performance and his quote, Brew? Well, look, people think I'm hard on Joel Embiid. Because you are. And I am. Yeah. I am. Okay. But I, I'm going to tell Joel, hopefully he's watching, I'm hard on – this is what my dad used to say to me when oh. he was hard on me. I'm hard on you, Joel, because I believe in you. Because you have so much potential. All right, that's why I'm hard on you. Take it as tough love. Take it as constructive criticism. It'll help you. All right, so last night, I actually think despite the nine turnovers, despite the poor shooting percentage, 
He played well. Really? And what I like is that he's been doing what I've been saying he needs to do for years. Last night, he played big. He played big. Now, I'm going to show you some things. Here we go, beginning of the game, five minutes in. Look at where he's at. He's actually in the post. And he, he, he gets it in. He draws the double team, kicks it to Maxi. A lot of his, a few of his 10 assists were passes he got in the post, drew double teams, yeah, mm. and kicked it out. That's the thing. It's not like every time you're in the post, you got to score, but you draw double teams and you open things up for your teammates. So I like that. Then here we go. This is like a minute 40 left. And, well, this is, the, no, this is in overtime. Yeah. The steal on Jalen Brunson. That was a great play. Great play. And he had four blocks. All right, yeah. I'm going to get to that in a moment. But the steal on Brunson, that, that's an awesome play. One of the best guards in the league right now. Uh, and then you see this bucket with a minute 40 left. Uh, great play by Embiid. Again, attacking and, hits the th and, and made the free throw, put him up four uh, in, in the overtime. And so... I thought he was good. He played big last night. He was in the post a little more. He's not very good. You know, his post moves, I mean, he missed some bunnies mm. near the rim, some little jump hooks. Maybe that's why he doesn't go in there, but he should go in there more. And here's the thing. Last night, now he has not been good in this category in elimination games. But last night, he had 15 ass stocks. Okay. 15 ass stocks. Bro, that's, that's assists. We know what it is. Plus steals plus and blocks. blocks. Yeah. Well, now you like stocks, but I'm going beyond that. <laughs> ass stocks. <laughs> Ten assists, one block, one steal, and four blocks. Now, now, he had only had nine at, or 39 ass stocks in his <laughs> previous nine elimination games. And last night he delivers 15. Good job, Joel. Just because I want to use it. What's the pronunciation? Ass stocks. Ass stocks? Yeah. That's it. But Which is so funny. You, 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 you never heard it. And no. you, we know what it is. No. I just invented that. I know, but I <laughs> deciphered what it was. I don't know if it's allowed and to be said on TV. also because Brew <laughs> be doesn't curse. Radio thing. He doesn't even have in his brain how that, that just sounds like you're talking about a stock. No, attack. I said like one, the, word, we, we get one it. word. We get it. Yeah, it's we one word. It's one word. Yes. We understand. Um, I, how, you're right. You did invent it, but yes, I somehow cracked that code. Um. <laughs> Um, and so here's the thing. You know what this reminded me of, Wilds? I don't know. Do you have a phrase? No, I don't. Okay. No, I'm the one that creates <laughs> I think the stats we, uh, on this show. I think we actually had back-to-back -back very similar <laughs> games. I saw you tweet that. I disagreed. But what did I tweet? You don't even know. What did I tweet? That you I don't know. Keep going. I'm, no. I'm on tilt. Go no, ahead. go ahead. <laughs> no, go. The, the, I don't think I tweeted it because I thought of I was thinking it. So I don't think I even yeah. actually tweeted this. In. Uh where you have an MVP center whose final stat line looks good, but the game was saved by his Robin perimeter guy. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In that, like, I thought we, Joker's final stat line from game oh, five oh, looks good. good. Hey, you know what I mean? Didn't quite have the triple-double, but it was a bunch of turnovers. Didn't feel like a great Joker game. Wasn't nearly and as bad as Embiid's the, looked the, uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, sure. Yeah. And so, and but Murray saves the day. I thought Joel's, that stat line looks to me better than he played over the entirety of the game. But where I will give him massive credit is the things that when he, he going into last night's game, was averaging 35 points per game, was being criticized for what he wasn't doing. And last night he did it. They cleaned up on the glass. They yep. didn't get killed on the uh, on I the forgot to mention offensive five glass. offensive right. rebounds. He, he got five offensive rebounds and prevented the Knicks from killing yep. him on the he offensive glass. He only had one offensive rebound yeah. in the previous it, two games. And the, his defense, I thought, was excellent throughout. And in overtime, I thought he was the best sixer. I yep. thought in overtime he was great. Now, the flagrant foul, I personally don't – I didn't love that flagrant call – but because Embiid has kind of earned where skepticism from the officials, I understand. When I, once I saw them go to the monitors, I'm like, oh, man, they're going to upgrade this to a flagrant. And a four-point lead could end up being a tie game at the end of it. And that's exactly what it was. The Sixers overcoming that, like in the, the, the emotional letdown of, oh, my God, we just got a flagrant. Now it's a tie game. I thought was impressive. And it must be said, this is what I tweeted you, you said they were going to come out in 10-man mode. You said this was a team that had no heart, 
Who and said I thought it, and Philly, I, no, I, I did think I, they showed me some they, heart. Right, that's what bit. we got to yeah, say. They we got to say, yeah. okay, Look, so They I, showed me some heart. I, I was surprised. They showed resiliency. They showed heart. I yeah. still I, – I picked Knicks in seven, and I think that's how it's going to end. So you do think the Sixers are now going to win game six? Yeah. Look, oh. the Sixers are the better team. Wow. If Joel Embiid – and I, I don't know what his health is right now, but it, he's not healthy – if he were healthy, I think they clearly are the better team. But I think watching these games, they're the better team. They just have to go out. They don't have the heart and the mental toughness, I don't think, of the Knicks. They showed it last night, but you got to show it every game no, in the that's, playoffs. Th- listen, that's, that, I understand that piece of it. My point is there was real concern that Philly was going to roll over. And not only did they not roll over to start the game yeah. – at no, the end of the game, they where there eased. were plenty of times they could have yep. just been like, God, dog I give it. Them credit. And instead, they get one of the best wins of any team all year. They yeah. deserve credit. Yeah. Okay. Head to Milwaukee. Three varies. Yeah. Okay. 1.5 varies apiece. Can uh-huh. the Bucks still win the series? Yes. Now, Vegas doesn't think so. Just for whatever it's worth, Milwaukee is 6-1 to one to win the series. They're Eight-point dogs for game six alone. Mm. So Vegas, to me, that tells me Vegas thinks that it's going to be the same lineup they had this past game. But regardless of this, I that is a horrific Pacers loss. Hey, Portis was excellent. Chris Middleton was great. But if you're the Indiana Pacers, you got to have a – this is a really – Tough flight back to Indy. Uh, maybe it's a bus ride. I don't even know. Tough. But a tough uh, tough ride back home. Be, and the whole NBA, every team that is still alive in these playoffs, should be furious with the Pacers. Because I'm not saying the Bucs are a great team. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is they employ one of the five best players in the league and Damian Lillard, who has already, this playoff, shown flashes of playoff Ooh. brilliance. Yep. They could have been done with without having to deal with either one of those guys, and to <clears throat> have that performance, like Tyrese Halliburton, I don't know, I, I, at some point it can't just be your knees not exactly right, like you need to show up. Patrick Beverly yeah. was a plus 36 Cooking. in 36 Nick, minutes. Be, I, be fair. Yeah. You got to give Patrick no, Beverly some credit. No, I I, I mean, like, he, he has actually played well since they, you know, with Dame out. Yep. He's been yeah, good. 100% true. But still, even though I he deserves credit, him being – he should never be a plus 36 in any game against an NBA team, and he was. And so I just – I think that is – this to me is more – of a disaster by the Pacers because you could have ended them without their two best it's guys. It's a young team, though. All right, I, it, it's a young team. You're right. I mean, it's it's a bad loss because you had control of this series. I still think the Pacers win. Certainly, Milwaukee could win. They're not obviously not better without Giannis and Dame, but they, they're forced to move the ball more, mm-hmm. get everybody some touches, get everybody involved. And defensively, they're better with Beverly at the point of attack than they are with Dane. And so, you're right. Halliburton is a bizarre situation because we get him, okay, you came back earlier from injury, but how long is that going to last? I mean, maybe it's just continuing to linger and he needs an off season to really get right, but he is not playing well no. at, by his standards at all. Man. All right? He would not be on Team USA if this was who he really is. And so, Halliburton needs to step up. I, I think they close him out. In Game Six, I'm not expecting Dame or Giannis to play. Well, if they if and neither if plays, does, then I agree different. with you. But if one of them does, they can win this series. They, they, and yeah. Wow, yeah. I a little. I put a little taste this morning, just a little bit. On what? Twenty-four to one, Milwaukee to win the East. Oh, in the East. 24-1. Okay. to Well, one. that's your pick. Don't that, run from the, Don't well, act like I, uh, well, you, you, that's your I, pick. It was my pick before. We're we not jumping on you about Gian, it, but that's Because your pick. Giannis is writhing in pain and right. Damian Lillard is too. So it is your pick. Does the, that take, the, like, bruised Clippers? Has the, bruised Clippers, has that ever taken bruises from in front of Clippers? The, never. With all the injuries? I still can't slack for the Nets. What? Who never were healthy. <laughs> yeah, they never got a chance. They would have had a championship. I'm just talking about Milwaukee. Body betrayed him. My point is 24-1. I think America is good value on Milwaukee because if if Giannis is very very close, they can win this round and they can win. Whoever comes out of Nick Sixers is going to be beat to hell, and so he's not I, very very close. Yeah, How do you know? I, because I, I if I because if, if we have if we're going out to dinner and I'm late 
And you're like, hey, where are you? And I'm like, I'm very, very, very close. I'm like <laughs> half an hour away. Time. Like that, I mean, <laughs> I'm very, very, <laughs> very Five very minutes close. away. You're <laughs> half hour close away. At all. Okay. Uh, Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.